and in the sixth chapter about making the egg crate foam, like about six minutes in, he starts trying to trim the foam to fit the case, right? It's a tedious ass job. It's something that you find yourself doing all the time in 3D though, is how do you make one object work with another one? And my general philosophy for 3D is any time that you're just like sitting around and you're like tweaking vertices, you're, you're doing it wrong. Like you're not sculpting geometry at that point, you're just like doing bad drafting or something. So like think about what you're doing and if there's ever an opportunity not to tweak verts and actually just do it more efficiently, like do that. So like this is something I do at work all the time because we're in a situation where the poly count doesn't matter a ton. In a situation like this where you're making a high poly model with the goal of you know making a nice bake later, this works perfectly. So the way I'd handle this is I would just take the freaking top, like the piece that I want to use as a cutter, and uh, I'd boolean it out, but um, not just straight ahead. So this will teach like two different techniques that I use. So I'm going to open this group real fast. Alrighty, so I'm going to make a duplicate of the top because I don't want to accidentally wreck a piece of geometry that I want later. So I'm going to duplicate that bad boy and name it something obvious. Yeah, like box seven. No, like delete top. All right, so I'm gonna grab delete top and a piece of egg crate foam. Hide everybody else. Cool. So I'm gonna go over here to this guy, and it copied the whole modifier stack here. And since I'm just trying to make a cutter piece that works with this, I don't actually need this turbo smooth here. So I'm gonna turn that thing off, and then collapse the stack. Convert this to a poly just for good fun. So I'm jumping in here to edge mode, and the idea is to have the egg crate fit inside the case more or less perfectly. And so what I want to do is figure out which of these loops is going to be the correct size for intersection where I want it. And it's kind of in between these two. Uh, so I'll use the lower one. Nah, this one here. Not that one there. This one here just for like kicks. So I'm going to shift click the one next to it, which grabs the whole ring. Bam, bam, like this. And here's a button that I use all the time that, like, um, I asked John if this feature existed because I use it in Maya all the time. And I was so happy to see that in the new version of Max, it's just sitting right here. It's create shape from selection. So I'm creating, this is my Boolean cutter. There's one of those. Wow. Now, this piece that is so happy named the delete top, we no longer need. So, grab it. Grab the whole object, top of the stack. Boom. Don't need it. Alright, so I'm going to grab this guy here. Editable spline. Very nice. I'm going to toss an extrude modifier on it. There we go. Extrude. Give a little bit of height so that I can encompass the thing that I'm trying to cut. Perfect. Oh, so nice. Move it into the cutting position, if you will. All right, out of my way, isolation mode. All right, come on over here to the create. We're going to go to extended primitives. And the primitive I want is the boolean. And since I can read, sorry, I meant compound objects. Because <laughs> this is two objects compounded together. Uh, grab the boolean. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick operand B over here. Pick operand B. That's this one. Oh, so nice. And uh, it didn't pick the mode I wanted. It automatically kicked me out of isolation mode. So what I did is I just selected it and hit isolation mode again. Because what we actually want is the intersection of those two objects. Where they come together. Oh, so nice. Now, there are reasons why you would do the tweaking vertices and spending like he does the next however many minutes of your life. Uh, you know, tweaking that thing to fit. And that's like, you know, later we have to project this onto something. And realistically... What I'm going to do is the same thing I did before. I'm going to select that ring again, and I'm going to extrude it, probably delete the top cap, and then use that amazing quad cap modifier, which uh, props to the guy who wrote that, quad cap pro, to make a perfectly fit quadded mesh that projects all nice and evenly. All right, so to, to finish this up, I'm going to toss that, uh, sorry, turbo smooth on there just to make sure that it looks good. And then uh, make sure that I don't have any gaps. Uh, the easiest way to check for that is to use the X view tools. Right here, X view. And I'm going to look at uh, the open edges. 
as long as my open edges are going into the case a little bit and they're not like just floating anywhere and they're not coming straight through I know it fits perfectly and will project all nice boom so there we are Brad's pro tip of the evening and that's that